One, Todd Pate. But if it is not your intent to enter a guilty plea at this time, then I'm going to set your case for jury trial, and you're going to stop wasting my time and everybody else's time this afternoon. Take a seat at Breckenridge Circuit Court, where a heated hearing is underway for a Breckenridge County Sheriff who continuously finds himself on the wrong side of the law. 51-year-old Todd Pate was arrested and charged with what was described as his second case of DUI after crashing into another driver. Sit back and let's find out what the verdict will be. On March 8, 2019, Breckenridge County Sheriff Todd Pate crashed his truck on Highway 259, sending one woman to the hospital with critical injuries. When he was arrested, officials noted that his blood alcohol content was .159, which was almost double the legal limit. Sadly, this wasn't the first time the officer, who was supposed to be an enforcer of the law, found himself breaking the same rules. In October 2015, Pate was arrested for DUI in a Waffle House parking lot in Bowling Green and faced multiple charges. The Kentucky state officer who pulled him over reported in the arrest slip that the sheriff had an open beer in the center console of his vehicle. Now at the Breckenridge Circuit Court for his hearing, things got off on a rough start for the officer who showed a lack of concern for his contentious behavior. Uh, is that your phone, Mr. Page? Yes, it is. You need to put it away. Okay. I was just... Had a... Need to put it away. Okay. Before the hearing, Pate had indicated being ready to take a plea deal, but now in the courtroom, he was reluctant to commit before Breckenridge Special Judge Janet Crocker, which led to an heated exchange. This time is it your desire to change your plea uh, from not guilty to guilty? Do I have to answer that yes or no, or can I make somewhat of a statement that's that is I'm... That is a yes or no answer, sir. Pate refused to give an answer, and the judge was clearly not having it. You, it is your intention to change your plea from not guilty to guilty. Certainly, you'll have an opportunity to make any statement. But if it is not your intent to enter a guilty plea at this time, then I'm going to set your case for jury trial, and you're going to stop wasting my time and everybody else's time this afternoon. Ma'am, I'm not trying to waste your time. This back and forth went on for a while, and Judge Crocker had enough. Mr. Pate, I'm talking at this point in time. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At this point in time, I'm going to sustain the Commonwealth's motion to revoke his bond. He will be taken into the custody uh, and housed in the Breckenridge County Jail. Pate, who eventually pleaded guilty to the multiple charges against him, was sentenced to serve 75 days in jail. Two, Joshua Underwood. Mr. Underwood, Mr. Underwood, in this court, in this court, one person talks at a time. Let's head down to an Oconee County courtroom where a corrupt cop is about to get a rude awakening. Former Deputy Joshua Underwood faces charges after he barricaded himself inside his bedroom with a firearm when deputies attempted to carry out an eviction notice. Now, at his dramatic bond hearing, let's find what the consequences of his actions will be. Former Deputy Joshua Underwood found himself in court following an incident that occurred in February 2019. The deputy was said to have barricaded himself inside his apartment, which eventually prompted a response from SWAT. According to Oconee Sheriff Mike Crenshaw, deputies from the Civil Division arrived at Yee, the Crescent Point apartment on South Oak Street, Seneca, at 10 a.m. to evict 39-year-old Joshua Lee Underwood, whose employment with the police department had been terminated. Underwood, who was in a back bedroom of the apartment, refused to leave the residence despite numerous attempts to get him. Underwood led deputies to believe he was armed with a firearm, threatening to use it if he was forcefully ejected from the apartment, and this led to a standoff. Due to the fact that Underwood was a former employee, the assistance of the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division had to be requested. Not long after, SLED agents and even a SLED SWAT vehicle Vehicle arrived all the way from Columbia to negotiate a peaceful surrender. At 1.45 p.m., Underwood finally surrendered without incident. He was taken in, and a .40 caliber handgun was recovered. He was transported to the Oconee County Detention Center for a bond hearing. But this proved disastrous as Underwood, who didn't seem remorseful at his actions, went ahead to disrespect the court judge. At the courtroom, the judge decided to impose a bond of $50,000 following the solicitor's request, but Underwood didn't seem to agree with this ruling. Underwood, who couldn't be heard clearly due to the barrier between him and the judge, went on a roll, resulting in an heated exchange. I am. I am. Because I have that latitude, given the severity of... What reason is your... Sir. Why are you standing behind the... Mr. Underwood? Mr. Underwood, in this court, in this court, one person talks at a time. However, Underwood showed no sign of stopping and went on at the judge, who didn't take the disrespect nicely. You're going to find yourself in contempt of court. Okay. All right. 
Are you going to allow me to finish? At the end, the judge's ruling was upheld, and Underwood was to remain in detention until he paid $50,000. He would also be required to wear an electronic monitoring device upon his release as a condition of bond. 3. Jordy Yanes Martell. 30, a former Miami Gardens police officer learning his fate over a controversial arrest. Take a seat at the Miami-Dade Circuit Court where Judge Marissa Tinkler Mendez is about to hand down sentencing in the controversial case involving Miami Garden police officer Jordy Yanes Martell. Martell was charged with battery and trespassing after he was caught on camera, placing his knees on a woman's neck and tasering her multiple times. As Jordy Yanes Martell sat in the courtroom, his face was devoid of any emotions as he awaited sentencing. The former Miami Gardens police officer was in court following an incident that occurred on January 14, 2020 at Tootsie's Cabaret in Miami Gardens. On that date, Giannis Martel was working off-duty as security at Tootsie's Cabaret when he encountered 33-year-old Sophia Satchel, who was being removed from the club for throwing money at a waitress. When he encountered her, she was already in her vehicle about to leave the premises, but just then an altercation ensued between the two. Body camera and witness video showed Giannis Martel forcefully removing Sophia from her car and taking her down on the ground. At some point, he could be seen with his knees on her neck while another officer held her arms down. Sophia, who was pregnant at the time, was tasered twice on her stomach and suffered numerous bruises and abrasions, even on her stomach from the taser. The video was released online and the Miami Gardens Police Department received numerous backlash. Giannis Martel was fired about five months after the incident occurred and was also facing seven charges, including battery and official misconduct. However, the jury found not guilty of five out of these seven charges, but he was convicted of battery and trespassing. We the jury find as follows. Count one, official misconduct, incident report. The defendant is not guilty. Right before he was sentenced, Sophia Satchel was allowed to make a victim impact statement. From his knee choking the life out of me, fabricating reports and lying on me, to being tased multiple times in the abdomen while being pregnant, I want him to suffer as much as he intended for me to suffer that night. Judge Mendez sentenced Giannis Martel to 30 days in prison. 30 days, Dade County Jail. Along with his sentence, the former Miami Gardens officer had to serve 18 months of probation and 250 hours of community service, 100 of which must be spent speaking at schools about how not to conduct yourself as a police officer. Four, Charles Reeder. Your Honor, please do not send me to prison. I have run, but I'm not run. I still have a lot of good left in me. At the Pike County Common Pleas Court, a corrupt cop accused of stealing drug money seized from arrests is about to be sentenced. 47-year-old Charles Reeder, who pleaded guilty to multiple charges, was reduced to tears in the courtroom as he pleaded with Judge Patricia Cosgrove for mercy. 47-year-old Pike County Sheriff Charles Reeder came into international spotlight when he became the lead investigator in the Roden family massacre, also known as Ohio's worst homicide, where eight members of a family were murdered by another family. Unfortunately, this cop in blue wasn't squeaky clean, as he used his office to steal thousands of dollars confiscated as evidence in other cases. Nemesis soon caught up with him in November 2018, when an anonymous complaint was filed with the state against him. Aside from tampering with evidence envelopes containing cash from drug arrests, Reeder was also accused of taking loans from employees and facilitating transfers and auction sales of vehicles impounded by his office, all to fuel his gambling addiction. From there, his reputation went down the drain as he was immediately indicted in June 2019, facing multiple counts. In 2021, Reeder appeared before Judge Cosgrove at the Pike County Common Pleas Court for sentencing, but just before he was sentenced, he stood sobbing as he took accountability for his actions. I can only ask that my staff, their families, the community, and my family who is here today, will forgive me for the undue stress I caused him. At some point, through sniffles and tears, Reeder tried pleading with the judge to avoid serving prison time. Again, I beg of you to impose a sense of community service, but the strictest sentencing and sanctions. Your Honor, please do not send me to prison. Judge Patricia Cosgrove, however, wasn't moved. And just before she handed down his sentence, she had some words for him as well. She called him out for his corrupt activities and how it affected the law enforcement officers in the community. It cannot be underestimated the damage that you have caused to the citizens of Pike County, to law enforcement who every day get up uh, 
face the same sort of stresses that you do. According to her, the sacrifices these men and women make, I think you've made a mockery of them. With that, Charles Reeder was sentenced to six years in prison for the felony charges he was convicted of and six months in the county jail on a misdemeanor charge. Since some of the sentences will run concurrently, Reeder was to spend a total of three years in prison. He was also barred from holding any public office in the state of Ohio. 5. Aaron Dean Next, we head to Tarrant County Court in Texas, where retired Fort Worth police officer Aaron Dean is about to be sentenced. The ex-cop was convicted after he fatally shot a black woman through the window of her home in October 2019. Take a seat while we delve into this case and find out what Dean's punishment would be. On October 12, 2019, 38-year-old Aaron Dean and Officer Carol Darch arrived at 28-year-old Tatiana Jefferson's home after a neighbor had called a non-emergency line around 2 a.m. to report what he thought was a burglary since he noticed her front door was open. Jefferson, who had been playing video games with her eight-year-old nephew Zion Carr, was alarmed when she heard noises outside her home in the middle of the night, so she reached for a gun. After retrieving her gun, she approached the window, but immediately she was shot and killed after Dean opened fire on her. For Jefferson's death, Dean was indicted with murder charge by a grand jury, but at his trial, he testified that Jefferson had been pointing the gun directly at him. Looking right down the barrel of the gun. And when I saw the barrel of that gun pointed at me, I fired a single shot from my duty weapon. However, Dean's testimony contradicted that of Officer Darch, who was present at the scene. She claimed that she had her back turned when Dean began to yell out commands for Jefferson to put her hands up. Darch claimed that when she started to turn, she heard a gunshot and saw a face in the window with eyes as big as saucers, but didn't see Jefferson holding a gun. She also testified that Dean never said anything about Jefferson having a gun with her. Following the testimonies presented in the courtroom, the jury, after 13 hours of deliberation, unanimously found Dean guilty of manslaughter. Slaughter. Verdict reads, we the jury find the defendant Aaron, De Aaron York Dean guilty of the offense of manslaughter as signed and signed by the presiding juror. Just before his sentencing, the judge allowed family members of Jefferson to make a victim impact statement, which was quite emotional. My sister did not do anything wrong. She was in her home, which should have been the safest place for her to be, and yet turned out to be the most dangerous. She was murdered. Dean was eventually sentenced to almost 12 years in prison for the shooting death of Atatiana Jefferson. We the jury, having found the defendant Aaron York Dean guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of the offense of manslaughter, assess his punishment at confinement in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice for 11 years, 10 months, 12 days. Dean would be eligible for parole after five and a half years. 6. Giovanni Crespo Let's make a stop at Essex County Court where a former Newark police officer, Giovanni Crespo, appears in court after he was accused of fatally shooting a man and seriously injuring another by shooting three times at their fleeing vehicle. What makes this case more horrifying is that the whole incident was caught on camera. On January 28, 2019, Giovanni Crespo was on duty when another Newark police officer pulled over a Chrysler 300 at around 11.17 p.m. 46-year-old Gregory Griffin was behind the wheels while Andrew Dixon sat in the front passenger seat. Sir, turn off the vehicle. Turn off the vehicle, sir. Turn it off. The officer who stopped the vehicle was heard repeatedly asking Griffin to turn off the car, and he refused. That was when she saw a handgun inside the vehicle. Seeing this, Griffin sped off, and the officer radioed in for backup. Crespo and his partner joined the chase through Newark Central Ward, and a crazy pursuit ensued. At some point during the chase, Crespo opened fire at the vehicle three times at different locations, one of which killed Griffin and left Dixon badly injured. <laughs> I shot him in the head. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Get the gun. Following the incident, he was suspended from work without pay. On May 21, 2019, Giovanni Crespo was indicted on six counts by an Essex County grand jury, and his case went to trial in 2023. His defense team argued he was just doing his job, which was to save lives. This law enforcement officer saved lives that night. End of story. However, prosecutors maintained that Crespo showed no respect for Griffin's life, especially as Griffin posed no imminent danger. Whether or not there's a gun in the car, and there was a gun in the car, is not justification to shoot somebody in the back of the head 
and somebody else in the face. The trial, which lasted up to 10 weeks, came to an emotional end after Crespo was let out of the courtroom, having been found guilty of all six counts, including manslaughter. He faces up to 30 years in prison for the crime. 7. William Melendez You were so into your bravado that you forgot the eye of justice was watching you and recording this disgusting beating, seeing Mr. Dent slammed into the window shield with blood running down his face. Now, happening at Wayne County Circuit Court, a former Inkster police officer, William Melendez, who was captured on camera repeatedly punching a black motorist, Floyd Dent, during a traffic stop, is about to be sentenced. On January 28, 2015, 58-year-old Floyd Dent was stopped by Officer Melendez for disregarding a stop sign. According to Dent, he wasn't aware he was being stopped by the officers. However, a police dash cam showed him eventually stopping the car. Dent claimed he was putting his hands up when one of the officers dragged to the ground, and that was when Melendez had him in a chokehold. Melendez, on the other hand, claimed that Dent had yelled, I'll kill you, at the officers and resisted arrest. Dent, in his defense, said he only struggled when he was put down because he was scared for his life and trying to get out of Melendez's chokehold. Melendez then repeatedly punched Dent in the head 16 times until he was all bloodied. Police also claimed Dent was driving on a suspended license and had a bag of crack cocaine under a seat. After the incident, Dent was charged with assaulting a police officer, resisting arrest and possession of cocaine. Cocaine, but he maintained that the bag of crack cocaine was planted on him. He was then made to take a lie detector test, which he passed, and his fingerprint wasn't found on the bag of cocaine, so the charges against him were dropped. On the other hand, there were no reports of the brutality that had taken place until when WDIV-TV aired the footage in March of the same year. The video sparked public outrage, and that was when Melendez was fired. Inskter also agreed to pay $1.4 million to Dent, who had suffered blood on his brain, broken ribs, and other injuries following the incident. Melendez was indicted and a trial began later in the year. In November 2015, a Wayne County jury found him guilty of misconduct in office and assault with intent to do great bodily harm. Just before he was sentenced, he offered an apology to the victim. To Mr. Dent and his family, I am truly sorry if this has caused undue hardships in your personal life. However, Melendez's apology wasn't enough to stop Wayne County Circuit Judge Vonda Evans, who spoke against his actions. They say that what you do in the dark will eventually come to light. And yes, it did. It became a worldwide example of what the police is not about and that's brutality. Melendez was sentenced to 13 months to 10 years in prison for his role in the police brutality case. Eight, Eric Fritz. Next, we head to Van Buren County Court where Eric Fritz, a former covert township police officer, is about to be sentenced. Fritz pleaded no contest to one, count of unlawful imprisonment after being originally charged with sexual assault and kidnapping. On July 9th, 2016, covert township Eric Fritz made a traffic stop in covert township, Minnesota. Both driver and passenger, a male and female, were heavily intoxicated with alcohol. The male driver was taken in for drunk driving. However, Fritz took the still intoxicated woman identified as Melissa McMillan to a hotel where he raped her. According to reports, Fritz turned off his in-car camera and audio within 90 seconds of pulling away from the scene with McMillan in his car. She claimed that the former police officer had taken photos of her naked while she was in the hotel room. According to McMillan, although her memory of what occurred that night was blurry, she remembered that the officer took her to three different hotels just to find a room and she woke up to find him on top of her. Fritz, who had only been a police officer in Covert Township for just two months, resigned within two weeks of the incident following criminal charges against him. He was initially charged with first-degree criminal sexual conduct and kidnapping, but these charges were dropped after he pleaded no contest in June 2017 to a lesser charge of unlawful imprisonment following a plea deal. He appeared at the Van Buren County Court on July 17, 2017 for his sentencing, but just before that, McMillan was allowed to make a statement. What you did to me was wrong. You made me. You knew I was highly intoxicated, yet you used that as a selfish opportunity. My life has been forever changed. Every aspect of my life has been affected. Still, Van Buren County Circuit Court Judge Kathleen Brickley had some harsh words for him. I took a law enforcement oath of honor to protect and to serve and to uphold the highest of ethical standards. Instead, you preyed upon and exploited and damaged a woman 
a woman who was entirely helpless due to excessive intoxication. Judge Brickley then sentenced Fritz to a year in jail to be followed by five years of probation. Following his sentencing, Fritz apologized to McMillan for offering her the hotel room, but offered no further apologies as he maintained that everything else that happened had been consensual. 9. John Romer Jr. Take a seat at Tarrant County Court where Officer John Romer Jr. is about to be sentenced following a 2016 incident where he punched a man in a hospital lobby and made false statements about the confrontation. On November 5, 2016, Fort Worth Officer John Romer Jr. was working off-duty security at a local hospital when he confronted a 20-year-old black male named Henry Newton. Newton was standing in the lobby of the hospital as he had just been discharged as a patient. The young man had suffered a case of food poisoning and had spent two nights at the Texas Harris Methodist Hospital, where Romer worked off-duty. He had been calling his parents to come pick him up when Romer found him to be suspicious. Footage captured on a police body cam showed Newton being interrogated by another security guard who demanded he told them the name of the hospital. However, Newton stated that he had already told his parents the name of the hospital and declined to answer the question. This seemed to make Romer very angry as he was soon seen shoving Newton before pushing him to the ground and punching him in the face. Soon other officers joined in as Romer continued to manhandle the 20-year-old. Newton was then arrested and charged with criminal trespass and resisting arrest, even though he was allowed to stand in the lobby of the hospital since he had just been discharged as a patient. Even with body cam videos showing the unjust treatment of Newton, nothing was done about the incident, and Romer was allowed to work until March 2018, when a civil lawsuit alongside other charges were filed against Romer. Romer, at his trial in 2019, told the grand jury that he had punched Newton after the young man resisted arrest. Arrest. However, video evidence showed that Newton was punched severally before Romer mentioned him being under arrest. He was found guilty of aggravated perjury since it was clear his statements were false. The judge sentenced the lying cop to five years in prison for offering false information to the grand jury. It is therefore the order judgment decree of this court that the defendant, John Preston Romer Jr., is hereby sentenced to five years confinement in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. While Romer was sentenced to serve prison time, Newton, on the other hand, had the charges against him dropped. 10. Michael Notoriano. Our final case takes place at the Wayne County Circuit Court, where a St. Clair Shores officer went extra with his vigilantism as he attempted to retrieve his daughter's stolen cell phone from a suspect. Sit back as we find out what the verdict will be for this case. In July 2013, Officer Michael Notoriano and Detroit Police Sergeant David Pomeroy attempted to recover Notoriano's 16-year-old daughter's stolen iPhone. Using the GPS tracking function, both officers trailed the phone to a Detroit gas station where they accosted three black men at gunpoint. Aside from retrieving the iPhone, Notoriano allegedly stole $300 and a bag of marijuana from one of the men while Pomeroy retrieved a handgun. Before letting the suspected thief go, Notoriano was said to have hit him in the face with his gun while he reportedly yelled racial slurs at the men. The incident was reported and the city of St. Clair Shores fired Notoriano. Pomeroy was sentenced to nine-month probation for failing to uphold the law and he resigned from his position. Notoriano had to appear in court where he was found guilty of misdemeanor willful neglect of duty. However, the jury found him not guilty of armed robbery, unlawful imprisonment, felonious assault, ethnic intimidation, and using a firearm to commit a felony. Notoriano took responsibility for his actions and apologized in the courtroom, stating that there were no winners that day. Wayne County Circuit Court Judge Timothy M. Kenny sentenced Notoriano to six months in jail, but not before sounding a note of warning from the officer who punched an innocent young man in the hospital to the other who fatally shot an innocent woman at her home. This video of 10 corrupt cops getting brutal karma in the courtroom shows that no one is ever truly above or below the law. If you enjoyed this video, click on the cards showing on your screen for more like this.